everyone, it's Anne. I'm here to show you how to create a little mixed media canvas. It's a four by six inch canvas. And I've had many people in my Facebook group, Annalise's Mixed Media Everything, ask about how to create mixed media. They want to learn more. They're new to mixed media. And there's really no um, sure, you know, for sure, rules okay is what i'm trying to say there's no hard fast rules with mixed media and that's why i like mixed media because you can take it any way you want and so today i'm just going to show you how i create texture on a canvas and first of all i'm grabbing my tombow markers they're a little bit spendy but you can find other types of markers like some of the crayola markers are water soluble and that's what I'm going to do on my background and you're probably wondering well why am I using water soluble markers on a canvas that you want to make permanent and that's what I'm going to show you I'm going to show you how to make these permanent all right so that they're not going to move around again when you apply something wet over them so I'm showing you here how I'm just adding some lines of color and then I'm going to come back in and I'm going to wet them and then I'm going to show you what I'm going to add to the top of it to make it permanent. All right. So enjoy this part of the process and I'll be back in a few. All right, so I'm taking some gesso here and I'm just putting a very little onto the canvas, directly onto the canvas. And then I'm gonna take my brush and my brush is gonna be a little wet and I'm going to go ahead and push around the gesso, which is gonna kind of move around the watercolor, but it's not gonna move it around as much and it will make this permanent so that when I go ahead and add other media to this canvas it's not going to move around so that's how you can make these things permanent and the same goes with for your nail color twos or your water soluble crayons you can do the same kind of thing now the white will take away a little bit of the color you know take away the intensity of your color but if you kind of want to mute the color down or you know bring the color down a little bit then white gesso works really well for this. Another way of making your watercolors permanent is to get a fixative and apply a fixative to it. That will make them permanent. But this is how I kind of like to, I like to experiment with things. And so I will often use different types of art products, art media, and get get it to um, work with it to get what I want to create with it and sometimes it's an aha moment sometimes it's an accident a wonderful accident or mistake to so to speak we learn by our, our mistakes and to me there's no mistake in art it's just experimenting and a learning experience and some of these techniques I've learned by just experimenting and yeah so <laughs> All right, so I'm taking some gel medium, which is a little bit thicker than matte medium or, you know, and they're basically glues is basically what they are. And this is kind of a thicker glue meant for acrylic paints. It's a gel medium. It's by Blick. It's a lot cheaper than, say, Golden or Liquitex, that kind of thing. And it works just as good. And I'm going ahead and I'm applying some to the over the tops of what I've already included. And then I'm going to take the back of a 
brush. Well, first of all, I'm taking a silicone. It's one of those hot pads, heat pads, whatever you want to call it, you know, that you like a mitt, but they're made out of silicone and it has a pattern on it and I've cut it up to smaller sizes. And so basically I've stamped into the gel medium, which is going to leave some texture. And then I'm taking the end of a paintbrush and I'm going to draw into the gel medium to create some pattern and some shapes, some texture into the gel medium. And it's going to dry that way. It's going to stay that way um, unless you smooth it out with something else. But this is a great way of adding texture to a canvas or to an art journal page. Gel medium is a great way to go. And also gel medium is great for gluing down thicker pieces of, say, scrapbooking paper or photographs, things like that. It has a little more tooth to it than, say, a matte medium or just a simple glue. This really works well for thicker pieces, heavier pieces of papers, whatever you're going to decide to glue down to your mixed media pieces. All right, so in this section, I took a portfolio. It's like a wax crayon, but it's also water soluble. I would compare it to maybe the Nail Color 2s. They are made, these are made by the same company that creates Crayola crayons. And I initially forgot to turn my camera back on. So I'm showing you how I'm using the edge of my crayon to add some color to it and this is a water soluble so you're going to probably wonder well Ann why are you using water soluble again when usually when you use do a canvas it's something that you want to stay permanent but I'm going to show you a technique that I love using because these are waxy crayons but they're also water soluble and uh, yeah so stay tuned with with what I'm going to do next with this crayon. And I forgot to mention that, don't forget that if you can't afford the Nail Color 2s because they are expensive, these are portfolios and they're much less expensive. They come in a set of, I think they have like 12 or 24, I believe. And uh, you can find them on Blick online or go to Amazon. Um, to find them. Um, I'm not sure if Michael's sells them or Joanne's, but check around because they are much less expensive than the Caron d'Ache Nail Color 2s. So check that out. And I'm also applying a, some washi tape to this canvas. And I haven't yet showed you the technique that I'm going to use with these wax crayons. So just stay tuned for that. It's kind of cool. So what I like to do with these portfolio crayons is I like to heat them up with my heat gun. It kind of creates an encaustic effect. So I just go ahead and turn on my heat gun and let it do its job of heating up the wax. And it melts the wax kind of into the canvas as well and adds a little more texture to this canvas. And then I let it, I, I accidentally on this one didn't let it dry first before I went ahead and applied some more matte medium over the top. Um, yeah, so I apologize for that. But anyhow, I was a little impatient, but what you're supposed to do is let the wax cool down and then you can apply your matte medium. And I didn't do that. And so I kind of created bubbles in my matte medium, which... I wasn't too concerned because I was going to be applying other things over the top so it would cover up those bubbles and it kind of had a cool effect to the bubble part so I wasn't too worried about it.
I've also been asked what's, what are some of my favorite go-to art supplies. And one of them is, is the Deco, it's made by Deco Art, and it's the, some of their mediums. And the one that I like a lot is their antique medium. It has a more of a yellowy tone to it. And they're really great and they're not expensive. If you go to decoart.com, you can search their all their products and you can actually shop on, get their products online there. Or I know that Joanne sells some of them. Uh, maybe some of your local art stores might sell them as well as um, Amazon, I think, sells them. And just check around. But I usually order mine directly from Deco Art. It's just easier than having to look around because not every art supply store sells the whole line, their whole line, because they're also, you know, carry their the Americana line as well as their uh, media line and there's other other ones as well so check them out another thing a must-have tool is the heat gun the heat gun is probably one of my favorite go-to items because of the fact that it dries things faster so you don't have to wait for each layer to dry um, the only drawback about a heat gun is it can break down the plastic -y part of your uh, acrylic paints, but if you're adding layers over your acrylics, it's not going to affect it in any way. Um, sometimes I like to air let my, let my um, art projects dry on their own so I'll set it aside and start something else. The only problem with that is is that if you're like me you'll set something aside and then you'll forget about it. <laughs> and then you'll forget oh what was I doing so that kind of thing. So it's great to have your heat gun to have a heat gun and if you can't afford a heat gun and you have a blow dryer a blow dryer will work just as well. A heat gun actually probably has a little more heat to it and it's more direct heat versus a blow dryer kind of blows the air outward and kind of further out than say a heat gun will. Um, so that's just a little tip there for those of you that are new to art media, art mixed media I should say. All right so I like to use some of my die cuts that I die cut from my Sizzix Big Shot, and this is a Tim Holtz die cut. I can't remember the name of it, but I think it's like the Eiffel Tower, and it comes with a fleur de lis. And as so, I like to create die cuts out of my drop papers. I think it creates a cool effect. And sometimes after I've cut them out, I'll add other types of things like this piece here, the Eiffel Tower that I'm using has some glitter glue that I applied after I had cut out the fleur de lis a long, I mean not the fleur de lis, the Eiffel Tower a long time ago. So I'm just going ahead and applying some matte medium to the top. And this matte medium is made by Deco Art. And so I'm just going ahead and applying that and adhering the Eiffel Tower to it and I'm kind of pushing it into the matte medium using a the end of the, the paintbrush that I'm using to put the matte medium on and then I'll just let this dry and I think well I didn't exactly let it dry I think I used my heat gun on this and then I'll be back to show you the other items I'm going to add to this canvas. All right, so I do like to use items that are in my stash. Now I have an old negative from one of my pictures, my negatives that I have from old pictures that I've taken years and years ago. And I'm adhering it using these Elmer glue dots to the canvas. And then I'm taking a charm that's part of the Tim Holtz uh, ideology or altering, alterology or whatever he calls his line, different lines of things, all right? And he makes these charms that 
into the cold that look vintagey. So that's what I'm going to use. And how I'm going to apply that charm is I'm going to take some brads. I'm going to first poke a hole through the canvas to apply the uh, charm to it. But I'm also using some of these tacky glue for something in this, and I don't know what I'm gluing down. Oh, I'm gluing down this charm, this other charm. Somebody sent me in happy mail a long time ago. And so I'm gluing this down to the corner. And the glue looks white right now, but it does dry clear. So if you're wondering, is that going to dry clear or is it going to stay white? No, it'll dry clear. It just takes a, a while, especially if you're putting a lot of, of the alines on. I just happen to get not the clear alines tacky glue. They do sell it clear, and normally I buy the clear, but this time they didn't have it. They were out of stock. And in this section, like I said, I'm applying a brad, and so I'm going through my brads to see which one will look nice, look well with to adhere the charm to the, the cherish charm to the canvas. Sorry, I can't speak today. Well, most days I can't speak. Sorry, it's fibromyalgia that robs my brain. So I am poking the hole, and then the brad that I picked was a little bit too big, I thought, for the charm. So I took that one out and decided to use something else, a little bit smaller, because it was a little, I felt was a little bit too big. All right, so I do have to apologize in this next section. I totally forgot to turn on my camera. I apologize, but I am I did use a Stabilo all pencil that I went ahead and drew around, you know, outlined the Eiffel Tower, and then I took some matte medium and I went over that with a thin uh, brush to spread it around as well as to make the Stabilo All Pencil permanent. And I also did the same thing on the die cut flower. Well, it's actually a flower punch that I used to punch out some sheet music into a flower. And I outlined that with the brown Stabilo All and did the same thing technique as I did with the Eiffel Tower. And then I took this butterfly button that I found. I can't remember where I got it, but I went ahead and applied some gems to the holes. That's it for this particular canvas. So I hope that you enjoyed this little mixed media canvas. And those of you that are new to the mixed media world, stay tuned for some more beginner-like mixed media projects that can help you along your mixed media journey. And I hope that you like what you see. And if you do, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up, comment, share, subscribe, all that jazz. And I shall see you next time. Toodles. Have a wonderful day. Bye.